Hello, all you lovely people. Chris Gambit here, editor-in-chief of thephoblographer.com, and I am back with the re-edit series. I apologize for taking quite a break from the series, it's just there's been so much stuff that we've been working on behind the scenes, and then also a whole bunch of stuff that the Foblographer has been doing just in general, and I mean, we're a small team, so I've had to find a way to catch up. Anyway, though, so to get into the gist of the series and to kind of refresh people on this. This is a series where I go back into my archives, I look at images that I've shot, and I find a way to re-edit them, knowing what I do now and finding a way to make them better with that knowledge that, uh, as I said, I know now. So, for this one episode, I decided that I would go back into my archive and I would go to, where are you? Here we go. This was the Venus Optics Laowa 105mm f2 review that I did um, almost around a year ago at this point now. So I decided I'd go through and look at the images, and I mean, they were good, but I was trying to also figure out ways that I can make these images even better. So I decided that I would go through and I would look at my catalogs and figure out which kind of images I really want to edit, so I decided that I would choose these images of this woman here, Anna. Anna and I actually went to college together. Uh, she lives here, still in New York, many people kind of moved away, but she lives in Manhattan, and she is a violinist and a musician, so she asked me to shoot some portraits of her, and I actually, that was perfect for me because I needed to actually just get the review done. So. I decided that I would go through and look at these images. So there were two sessions that we did, and I'm going to be focusing on kind of the outdoor session. So the outdoor session had like 130-ish images, and right now in Capture One, because I've also been getting more questions and uh, inquiries about editing more in Capture One than Lightroom these days, because many of you actually want to move over, I decided that I would go through and I would cull before because I wasn't going to sit here and subject you to calling through like 130 photos. So instead, I have my favorites marked to green, which over here is like 33 images, and then the not favorites, which is red, marked at 97 images. So I'm going to say I just want to see the images that I marked in green. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cull down even more from here. And I purposely did a first culling just to kind of get rid of some images that I just think are, uh, they're, they're good, but they're not really what I would like to showcase in this tutorial. And they're also not images that I would nearly necessarily kind of work with. So let me kind of start with this photo. So why would I have chosen this photo? I really like this photo just because of the framing, the background, um, and the kind of spotlight that's happening here on Anna. So there was a flash camera right, like over here, and the light was coming down onto her, and then I was just kind of finding a way to blend in the ambient light behind her. So I really like this photo just because of, well, there are two different types of framing here. There's obviously the rule of thirds, which I can show you I believe if I do an overlay right now. So let me do uh, unconstrained. And right now I have uh, Capture One set up to the rule of tenths, but it kind of does give you the idea. So I'm going to choose not to crop. Uh, not cropping. Oh, it cropped, whatever. Now it's uncropped, just by pressing Control Z. But there's also kind of this frame right here. And I mean, Let's figure out a way that we can work with this. Let me try to straighten this image first. So if I go to straighten, use the straighten tool, and I base it on this line right here, then I get something that is straighter. Yeah, that works. Um, let me see if I can make that even straighter. Based on this line right here again. Uh, it's not going to become straighter than that. Okay. So now, let me find a way to crop. So first off, I should let you guys know that I was shooting with the Sony A7 here. And the A7 is actually uh, one of my favorite cameras still. A lot of people 
like the uh, higher end versions. I do too, but they're not anything like the A7 to me, and uh, you'll see why eventually. Um, I don't know if I really like a square crop here. Let's see how that looks. Actually, that isn't bad. Yeah, I guess we can work with it. Might as well work with it. Okay. So, I will go through and I will do a couple of things. First off, I'm going to check for sharpness. Uh, sharp enough. Um, she was glistening because this was a very, very hot day in New York. I remember sweating quite a bit, actually. So, this was actually shot with the 35.28, uh, not the 105. Um, and you can see that up here. The reason why I was using the 35 was because I remember I was also testing a Godox flash back then. So, yeah. Um, defringing, just a little bit. And what I'm doing here is, I guess I should kind of show you guys this. This is kind of where you manage uh, all your files, kind of like the library for Lightroom. And then this is where you, but this area doesn't really change. So, well, I set it to not change. You can see all your images here. The exposure evaluation, this is more for like tethering. And then this is lens correction. And I like doing that first. Uh, but right now I don't really need to do a lot of it. I may want to add some in vignetting though, but maybe take it away at the moment. I'm not sure. We'll see that. We'll see later on. And then what I like to do is I like to kind of work with the white balance first. So I always edit usually at 5500 or 3200 because I feel like that gives me the closest look to what film would actually do and a lot of the work that I do is based off of film. So let's see what happens when I work with the shadows. Um, I don't really think that we need to work with the shadows there, that's fine. Let's see what will happen if I make the shadows warmer. No, let's regret that I did that. And now the midtones. So now I'm getting a little bit more out of here or there and then the highlights I'm losing some detail in the sky. That's really about the only highlight area that there is. So now we go specifically into the color editor. And so before I go on, you may be wondering why I'm not messing with the exposure. The reason why is because I'm pretty much okay with the exposure. Um, I can work with it just a little bit, but I don't really have to. Um, otherwise, I would try to mess with the exposure just a little bit first if I needed to. Then I'd go to the white balance, and then I'd work with the specific color channels. So, Capture One gives you this really cool ability to be able to view by specific color channels to edit certain things. And right now when I click on that channel, um, it's associated with Anna's skin and the violin. But if I click on this channel, uh, that is less associated with her skin. I would like this channel to be more associated with her skin, and this channel to be... Should, is that really how it should be? Well, just for ease of use, I'm going to do that. I'm going to associate this channel with the violin just by kind of working with the area that that channel kind of covers right here. I wonder what will happen if I do this. No. So, I don't, I don't really know if I like that. So, here's what I can do. I can set the skin tone in Capture One. I can tell Capture One, hey, this is the skin tone. I want you to work with this. Okay, so the selected range is that to there, and there, and there. Okay, well, I can't really do much right now. It's going to associate the violin with her skin tone, and there's really not a lot I can do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the lightness of the skin right there. Uh, what I can also do is I can kind of work with the hue of it. I can say she's more orange or a little bit more purple. And then I can work with the lightness, uniformity, uh, whatever. Let's go into editing this then, shall we? So I'm going to work with the smoothness. So the smoothness is in reference to how much it kind of bleeds into other channels. So I'm going to saturate this a bit, lighten that a bit. Let's see what happens when I go this way. She's too purple. And when I go this way, uh, she's warm. So that's really kind of the look that we're going for. Same here with this channel. Go to the next channel. Uh, when I go to the left, it's more skin tone-like. So I'm going to work with that. I'm going to saturate it a bit just to see how that looks. 
the green channel is associated with the trees in the back, so I'm going to saturate those because I really do want those to punch out. Then there's the blue that's the sidewalk over here, and there is why are you why is this tool never mind. Um, the blue channel is associated with that area. So now let me see what happens when I work with a hue here. So if I work, go towards the left, it includes more greens on the tree. If I go to the right, it includes more purples. Let me go back to that green channel. Let me see what happens when I work with these. So if I go to the right, it's more kind of aquamarine. Go to the left, it's more actual green. And what I'm doing here is I'm working with the hues, I'm working with the saturation, I'm working with the brightness of each color channel to make each color kind of pop out more. And I'm doing that with the purples here. I'm going to saturate that purple just a bit. But let's see what happens when I move the hue one way or the other. Uh, I'm going to make that more blue. And then this one, there's nothing really there. So now when I unclick to view selected range, I'm going to see the entire image. And that's pretty saturated right now. Um, much different from the original. Let me show you the original right now. That was the original. And now if I go back to that, now we kind of have an image where she's popping quite a bit. I don't really know if I like the saturation on her though, so I'm going to kind of scale that back a bit. It's a little bit too much for me, but nothing wrong with it. It still looks nice. And I don't know, I think I may undo the contrast a bit. Yeah, and I'm going to kind of kill the highlights very bit, very tiny bit. And now, right there, I have an image that I really like. So all of these were also shot with flash. So these are all from the same session, more or less, right there, up to there, because here it's a totally different lighting scenario. So what I can do is I can say, OK, I edited this image, and I'm going to select all of these, and I want to sync all of the adjustments that I did there. Now I'm going to do the sync for all of the adjustments except for cropping. I don't want that crop. I don't want that rotation either. I'm going to deal with that myself. And now I'm going to click apply. And just like that, all of the edits are now synced. They all look really nice, actually. Ooh. That kind of looks ethereal and spooky. Now what would happen if I go into turning this into a black and white? Let's see what happens. Let me set this to black and white. Enable black and white. Nah, makes more sense in color actually. So these are kind of nice. Well actually they're all pretty nice. Now I'm going to call from these uh, 14 that I have selected. That's okay. That is nowhere as strong as that. That's okay, that's nice, but this is stronger, that's pretty nice, that's a no, that's a no. Um, I kind of do like the Dutch angle. I do that sometimes, it's fun. I don't think it works here though. It kind of looks like the movie Inception or something like that right now. That's pretty beautiful. I wonder how that would look if we warmed the image up a little bit more. Um, I'm not necessarily for it, but I'm not against it either. I like kind of the blue ethereal hues that we got going on here. That's beautiful. Of any of these, okay, so I narrowed those 14 or so, 13 or so, down to 6. So now I guess we can get rid of that one. So these 5 are really nice. Now if I wanted to narrow this down to one image, it would be just this one. Because, I mean, she's kind of posing. Uh, this image is pretty nice. This is pretty nice. This orange light here has distracted the hell out of a lot of people. And if I wanted to get rid of that, what I can do over here, if I remember this correctly, is I can do a mask where I kind of clone that out right over here, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to increase the size of my ridicule, I'm going to kind of clone that out right there, I'm going to choose this area right here, 
And hopefully now that is cloned out. Let's look. Okay. Come on. There we go. Yes, I got it. I got it. It's cloned out. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. That can be a little finicky. I actually don't even use it all the time, uh, just because I'm pretty careful in my images, but it's a great tool for you to use. It's the same thing as, like, the heal tool in Lightroom. So now I have this other session. Before I even go into that, though, this is a photo that came out incredibly dark and that uh, didn't obviously work out, but the Sony A7, I was looking it up recently, and it's got this ridiculous dynamic range that continues to even impress me today because I got this really beautiful photo right there. And, okay, you may be co complaining about maybe, like, uh, the look of it or something like that and all that stuff, but I can use one of these uh, film presets. I'm using the ones from r &I Films right now. Wow, that was gorgeous. Go back to that. Yeah, so Fuji Pro 400 film. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> I saved that image just like that. It looks beautiful. Wow, okay. Well, let's continue. Um, I have a couple more photos here. Let's cull from these seven first. So there's that image. There's that image that's closer and pretty nice. That's beautiful. That's okay. She's kind of whimsical there, and I like that. Let's get rid of that one. Let's get rid of that one. I Let's get rid of that one. That's nice and close in. This is good. This is stronger. This is pretty strong as well, too. And so is that. So we are now working with these three images, and the lighting scenario is pretty much the same because the flash didn't really move. I moved, though. So let's start working with these images, shall we? These are all 35 to 8 again because I was testing the flash. And let's see what happens when I go to 5500K. It's very blue. What about 3200? 3200 is tungsten. No, that is too blue. So we're going to work with 5500. The reason why I like working with a custom white balance setting is because it's a great place to work when you come to editing all the other color channels later on. And then, I mean, if you want to, uh, you can kind of like move stuff around. Plus, in addition to that, too, I mean, that's what film is based off of, 5500 daylight film. So now, working with the shadows again. Uh, no, I don't like that matte look that everyone kind of goes for. Highlights, I'm going to get more of that. Midtones, I'm going to get more of that as well, too. So now, let's work with these. Again, she is being associated with the violin, more or less. Uh, somehow or another, that's the same with her skin. I'm going to saturate this just a tad. Greens, I'm actually curious if greens are actually going to come out here. Probably not, because it was like twilight. The blue, though, will absolutely come out. So I'm going to saturate the hell out of that. And I'm going to see what the hues do. That's more green. That's more kind of purplish blue. I like the purplish blue more. Uh, this, I'm going to saturate that more. Don't know if I want the purple. No, I want the blue. There is only a little bit there. So I guess I can saturate that because it's associated with her lips. And that'll make them pop more. And there we go. We have an image that is very well colored and also the it, everything is popping because of the color so she has the skin tone that i provided partially uh with illumination from a flash and then there's a very stagnant kind of background there so if i add more contrast then she stands out a little bit more a little bit more brightness gives us this overall brighter photo i guess if i nerf the highlights more detail kind of comes out in her and the background and then that's really about it. That's really all I need to do that photo. I'm really happy with it otherwise. So I'm going to sync the adjustments again to those other two. And now you see that all of these kind of get that same look. Maybe I can straighten this one. Let's, let's see what happens right now. If I straighten it based on that line, do I like that? She still looks like she is tipping over in a ship. I'm going to leave that there. Um, something that I really wish the Capture One had that Lightroom does have is the Upright tool. The Upright tool solves so many problems, and it's pretty awesome. 
this, uh, these two images were actually from the same session. So just for fun, what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate the Fujifilm Pro 400 look here, which is okay. It's very nice. Now, all these images were actually from the same lighting session as well, too. So let's, let's kind of be a little bit more experimental. Let's just play. So uh, this is ISO 1600. Let me find an ISO 1600 film. And again, what I'm using here is the RNI Films uh, pack. Uh, let's not use Delta. Let's use. I know they have Natura. I can't find it right now, though. Or if they have just an ISO 1600 film. Uh, beg pardon for my lack of organization for my presets. Uh, I'm sure many of you actually have the same kind of issue. So, oh yeah, you do have these film grains that you can do for pushing. Okay, so you know what? Let's work with Kodak Portra then. So going back, not Ektar, Portra 400. Okay, Portra 400. And then I'm going to choose to push it to ISO 1600. So it's pushed to ISO 1600, now this grain kind of comes up that actually looks very film-like, and I really like it. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to sync the white balance to 5500 daylight. Now that actually looks more like Portra. Um, Portra can also tend to render warm, though, so let me kind of warm that up just a tad. Okay, so that's there. And sharpening, I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy adjustments to everything here. So now let me call again. I like that. That photo's pretty okay. That photo is pretty nice. That one's beautiful. That one, no. That one's okay. That one's nice. That one's nice. That one's nice. And that one's nice. Cool. So now over here, we have shot over 130 images and we have culled down to 20 images. Let's see if we can call this down to 15 photos. That's nice. That's nice. That has this really cool ghostly look. I'm really kind of digging that still. The eye contact image is really nice. Um, the ones that she gives me are really kind of beautiful. You can kind of complain about her hand being cut off here, but I mean, like, you can kind of fix that just by doing a crop, more or less. So let me do an unconstrained crop to, like, here and here. And now she's kind of centered, so it's like, whatever, who cares. That's, I really like that one. This one I'm kind of iffy about. Also, what you should know is that sometimes my sensor gets dirty, so I'm going to kind of clone that area out again. So, new clone layer. Uh, mask, draw the mask. Uh, increase the size. And I'm going to kind of draw over that. I don't want that, though. I want this area. And now it should be OK. Yes? Yeah, OK. It'll, it'll still continue to show it to me, but whatever. So if I add another layer, ooh, now you see what happened. Um, I kind of screwed that up. So instead, I'm going to go to this layer. I'm going to work with it again. Or I'm just going to delete that layer, whatever. So I can also fix this if I want to by kind of cropping if I want more. Just like that. A little bit more in. Yeah, actually, the crop actually really fixes things, so I'm going to keep that image as well, too. That's just gorgeous. Um, I'm going to keep that, the natural light. I guess I can get rid of this one, even... Uh, no, I actually like it. That one's really beautiful. That one's really beautiful. That one is, too. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, the variations of her... I guess I can get rid of that one. I do like that smile more. That one's nice. That one's nice. One, two, three. Between that one or this one. 
think this one will go. Um, this one, her eyes are kind of blinky. This one's better. That one's nice, but eh. So there's that, there's that, there's that. Yeah, giving her the variations of these images actually works quite well and quite nicely. Some photographers may complain that I cut off her elbows, whatever. Uh, someone looking at a headshot of her isn't going to sit there and complain about her elbows. Photographers will. So now I have called these down to 16 photos. One more. One more. I like that. That's nice. That's nice. I would say of these, though, that could be the weakest image. So I'm going to just get rid of that one. And now we have called down to 15. And now what I do is I just go to export my images. And the way that I kind of uh, organize is I have folders set up. So September, I'm going to say the re-edit uh, images of Anna for a blog post. Because these ones are going to be in the blog post. Set up the export folder. Uh, the name. Anna... Bosnick, I actually even forgot how to spell her last name, so whatever. Anna's Portraits for the re-edit. Cool. And now, Long Edge, 1000 pixels, Adobe RGB, 72 pixels, 72 pixels per inch, rather. And exporting 15 images, significantly faster than Lightroom, and we are done. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Hope you learned something. And uh, be sure to let me know if you have any questions. Take care.